Hello, my name's Mishtava. I'm Chris Westfield. I'm head of design at Filler. Uh, Filler's, we've got about 12 people, so head of design is a very uh, broad role. It um, involves UX, marketing, and a lot of business strategy as well. So wear many hats just because being a startup. I'm the uh, head of DevOps, um, which is a very glorified title. Um, there's one head, that's it, and that's me. There's many DevOps though. There's, there's lots of DevOps. Um, filler. Um, filler is a startup, and we make an app that helps you fill forms on the internet, so you can buy more things and you know spend more money. That's all we're going to say about the company and the app. Um, if you're interested, ping us after the talk, and we're more than happy to take your money. I mean, talk about the app. <laughs> Chris. So. Firstly, where, where we came from, how we got to fill it, and, and I think it's quite brief, but it's quite important to this talk. We came from an app called POP, and if anyone has a guess as to what POP might be short for? Popsicle. It's as good as any. Yeah, that, it might as well have been. So, um, before I answer that, that's the, the fact that no one got it is, is part of the problem that we're going to address. Um, that was the icon. And that was the tagline. So pop was short for populate, and our icon told you nothing else either. And control your data was a very fluffy tagline that also gave you absolutely no hint as to what they app did. So obviously things went really well with pop. Uh, that was just one problem, our uh, messaging, but. The other thing was this feature. We just we came up. I mean, it was great technology. We had feature after feature after feature. Basically, Pop had to do with uh, really cool ways of transacting uh, with personal data from your phone, whether it was filling forms, sending data straight to companies, integration into businesses, into enterprises. You could enter Pop codes. There was all kinds of things. I won't even. It was feature after feature. We came up with features, and we thought that's really cool. We'd use that, and it went. And it went. And it's just piled it on. Of course. Nothing happened. We we had we also had uh, we had other business problems, but but a lot of it came down to just I mean, no idea. What we were we were terrible at telling us telling anyone what we did, and it was just fe feature uh, overload. We did have a feature that did uh, get get a little bit of traction. That was it was an in-app browser, and um, you, you, you'd get to a form within the in-app browser, tap the button, and form and fill. But of course, in your browser, obviously that's a massive change of habits for anyone to, to browse and, and use. I mean, you, 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 it's tough to ask people, hey, when you get to a form, you should open us and then use the pop button and fill the form. However, with iOS 8, it was Apple opened up extensions into, into Safari. And so all of a sudden, we could take that feature and we could actually use it in a primary, someone's primary browser, Safari, obviously. So we, we we took a deep breath and said, well, let's just let's not rush straight into this. Let's do this properly. Draw a line in the sand, and we created a completely new app, and it was really just that feature, and it was a simple message, and we uh, we we went back to the drawing board with names. We did um, group tests with colours with icons, and we used the tagline that said exactly what it did. Uh, hence, Filler was born, and it was autofill for mobile. It's simple as that. Really didn't want to overcomplicate it. The, the tech was amazing behind it, but as far as the consumers were concerned, it was just that simple. So, uh, sorry, am I going the wrong way? Yeah. We released, we released Filler, we pressed the release in the, in the App Store, the developer console, and we've done everything right, and we're like, okay, great, well, let's, that's it. Let's watch the, watch, the downloads, watch the downloads come. And yeah, they trickled through. It, organic was, was okay, it was going okay, but we, we, we had so many questions. Who was using it? How was it being used? Where was it being used? All these things. Well, I mean, we, we knew we had to target power users, but who were our power users? We, we had all these questions and no answers, and I turned to Mudge and said, help. 
which shows how little they you know, ask me for help. Um, so the question, it, it was a simple question of we, it's, it's like anything in there. You, you do something nice and it works and you go, oh cool, surely others must use this. You cook a nice dish, you go, surely they will like it. You watch a good movie, you recommend it to others, surely they will like that good movie. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, that which you think is useful may or may not be useful for others. And before you invite them over a house and cook dinner, you should probably find that out. Uh, so the question was, okay, we have one feature, autofill. We may or may not have users. How do we find out if it works? So now, Almost all of you, I, I'm assuming here, would be familiar with some form of analytics. We saw in the previous talk uh, a way of looking at analytics. Google Analytics is very popular. Uh, there is another one in the course of my um, attempts to find out if there was something out there that did what we wanted. Um, just a personal thing, Google Analytics confuses me. All I see is dollar signs that they want from me, and I have none. Mixpanel is like, yeah, I'm free, no. Oh, you want to use this? One user, fine. Two users, give me money. Mixpanel did more what, what, what I wanted, what we wanted, than Google Analytics, but as with everything, it got to a point where the price for getting those features was more than we could afford. I got given a choice. We can definitely get that Mixpanel feature. You won't get paid. I said, no, we don't want to expand it. <laughs> so what would we use? Now, AWS is Amazon's cloud providing mechanism, and most of our infrastructure is already, was already there. So I thought, OK, cool, if I'm going to do something, I might as well try it here myself. Um, that's Elasticsearch. It's an indexing app. You throw data at it, and it indexes it. Uh, very quickly, very nicely, and it's free. Uh, all the documentation is up to date and very easy to understand. So I thought, okay, cool. I have used both of these before uh, with degrees of success. Why don't I try um, fiddling with this again? Uh, and then I did. So this is just a very artisanal diagram sponsored by farmers from Colombia um, of what essentially happens. That's you uh, using a very gigantic phone, and you use our app. And essentially what happens is the app looks at the form that you're filling, and all of us know there's more than one way of writing any single form. So an email address can be email, email underscore address, email hyphen address. So what we do is the app sends the details of the form, not what you fill, but the details of the form to the processor and we send it back in a sanitized form. So email, email underscore email address, email hyphen address, e address, all gets translated to email address. So the app goes, oh cool, so you want to fill it with an email address. And that's sort of the piece we wanted to know. How many users are filling the field name? How many users are filling the name phone number? Things like that. And all that happens in that magical box, and you can tell it's a cloud because I put birds there. <laughs> and that's a processor, a magic processor. Um, and that's where I thought, okay, cool. It's in it, the information is coming to AWS anyway. So I might as well do something there. Uh, I came up with a neat name, a stats massagifier. It's not a joke. The file is called stats underscore massagifier dot coffee, um, despite complaints. So. What did I actually do? That's you. Data comes in, and I thought, OK, you have to use a queue. You're not a real architect if you don't use a queue. <laughs> so you use a queue. So the queue, in reality, was simply so once the processor had looked at the form and converted it, I could just shove it somewhere. So while I was thinking of how to actually analyze this data, I at least started collecting it. It kept getting in the queue. And one thing I would recommend is if you're playing around with the queue, don't put alarms on it. Do not do that. 
So all this while, data is going in the queue, going in the queue, accumulating. And I thought, okay, cool. What will I do is I'll just start up an EC2 instance, which is just a node, put Elasticsearch on it, write a small script that takes it from the queue, puts it in Elasticsearch with a very basic mapping. A mapping is basically that goes, this field is of this type, either break it into pieces or don't. And these are wonderfully done graphs by me, and that's Kibana. So Elasticsearch comes with Kibana as well. Hey, Kibana, just here's the index. Could you show me graphs? So that was my plan. All this while, um, the queue's accumulating. And at this point, I had a very simple infrastructure, and I could graph data. Things like what form was being filled. For example, it could be um, a survey form. It could be the meetup registration form. It could be um, just a contact me form on something. What, when was it being filled? What time? Um, which country was it being filled from? Simple things that you could, what, and things like what browser was it being filled from? Things like that. And when I had those graphs, I did what any responsible software engineer should do. I handed it to him and I said, I'm done. <laughs> so. Much gave us this great dashboard and, and, and these and the colors. About ten minutes of, of training, and we, we <laughs> sat there and we just played around with it for uh, for a little time, and and we were getting really simple stuff. I mean, to start with, it was literally just a list of of forms that users were, were hitting, um, and you know it confirmed things. You know, uh, Amazon gets hit a lot of. Um, Walmart gets hit a lot. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing necessarily groundbreaking about that. Um, but what we did find early on was this form that was getting hit repetitively, repeat, repeatedly, called Contest Girl, and we found our first lot of power users. Sweepstakes. Does anyone know what a sweepstake is? Sure, Matt. Yep. Huge in America. Uh, basically, all the you know, companies, whether, whether it's um, shampoos or cars, run contests. Just enter, enter your details, hit submit, you're in the contest. There are forms such as Contest Girl, Infinite Sweep, Sweep State Advantage, forms you've never heard of. They're aggregators. They just collect all these contests from all these different companies. So they're all on these different ugly forms. They're not standardized forms. So you can't just log in and store your data with, with uh, Infinite Sweeps and then they'll use that to, to populate forms because they're forms from everywhere and, and forms are ugly. So people, we, we noticed people were using autofill for it because they were able to get to these forms and they get sent off to a car company and sent off to a shampoo company, enter their details using autofill. And so we'd never really heard of this, but uh, you know, this is a sort of 17.4% in 2014, 17.4% of US household incomes of more than 100,000 actually invented sweepstakes everything in that year and, and it doesn't dip. So it's not even, there's, there's quite a broad demographic. It, it, it was a whole genre of, uh, of user that we, we'd never, never thought of and never heard of. So we contacted these aggregators and said, oh, can we advertise? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, any, any extra stream of money for them. And, um, we did this, one of our first really sophisticated Ads hitting a, hitting a contest site, uh, you know, it costs a hundred dollars to advertise to. I think she, she contest girl had thirty thousand MAUs, and she said, "Oh yeah, a hundred dollars. I'll keep you up for two weeks, and uh, and um, I'll put you on my newsletter. It's got a a, a, a good strong following of five or six thousand uh, readers. Great for us because we we did simple advertising to to users that we knew could use it, had a use for it, and." We got a whole lot of users. I mean, to this day, sweepstakes and contests in the US are still about 15% of our, of our field forms. And um, say it was bucks a week on Christmas. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, $100 spent with, with Contest Girl. Uh, Sounds strong, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, meant we could reduce Facebook advertising. It was just kind of like splattering it at that point because we didn't know who we were talking to. Uh, reduce that 500 down, paying only 100, getting getting real users. 
that was the first lot of power users that we continue to target to this day because, I mean, you know, sweepstake users, they're, they're just, they're like everyone else. They may just use it on sweepstakes today, but tomorrow they're using it on shopping carts. They're using it on uh, application forms. So to, to be able to seed ourselves with a group that, that constantly uses an autofill was, was great. Supreme, Supreme New York, does anyone know what Supreme New York is? It's a uh, streetwear brand based in New York, came out sort of the late 80s, 90s. And every couple of Thursdays, uh, this happens in New York, in London, in Paris, in Tokyo, at their, at their, they've only got a store in each of those cities, it, there's queues. Because what they do is they do a, fat, a drop, a drop of their latest their season, they, they do a collaboration with bands or collaboration with Comme de Garçon, anyone, and they do these fashion drops every Thursday at 11 a.m. in their respective cities, and there's queues. When these physical queues are happening, the online stores also release things at 11 a.m. and they get slammed. And what happens is people lose, you know, they load up their cart and they lose their item while checking out because there's just that many people on the on the form at that point in time. So there was a massive community of these supreme users, and it's huge, who were looking for auto ways to fill that form really, really fast. Um, and it, as I said, every every they don't they kind of announce them days before, but it's generally every two Thursdays, every second Thursday, I should say. And we tapped into them. We tapped into them via Reddit, where there's where there's loads of forums about Supreme and how to how to they call it copy. We learn a whole lot of language that you you, you cop your sneakers or you uh, um, anyway. I won't go into it, but. You know, this guy here, thanks guys, cooked on the AJ5 Supremes because of you. Cooked is another term that we learn. Um, copped grey Morrissey tea from Supreme, super heavy because of this free app. And this went on and we, we made our app store uh, images. Um, we, we directed them at, at this user, user base because, you know, they, they, they read about filler in forums, they go to the app store and we immediately wanted to make them feel comfortable. It's, it's these little nuggets that we found uh, early on, and, and Supreme to this day is how it, it's it, we get thousands and thousands of hit every second Thursday from all from the US and Great Britain are the biggest ones. Uh, and again, what we see from them is that, of course, they don't just spend their money for Supreme, they're buying different stores the next week. They're doing, so it, it's it's that seed that that grows. So we we got, a, as, as Mooch said, we got a lot of pretty graphs and, and, and things out of Cabana. And, and up here you can see Supreme. So the inner circle is, uh, represents a country of, of where, uh, where Supreme is getting filled. So if you look at, say, the left, the orange there in the inner in the circle, it's Great Britain. Okay, and Great Britain then is split between cities. cities uh, can't, can't read it, but it would be London and somewhere else. That's then split um, to... IOS or Android, iOS is much, much bigger. Yeah. And then, of course, browser. So we, we, we're able to analyze, we're able to target, we're able to, we, we know so much more, not about the specific users, because we have no idea who the specific users are, but we know where the, the groups of users. These are our browsers. So they're users on the right and the amount of fills on the, on the left. So in the middle there, you can see um, Safari, so 34, 35,000 users filled in that time frame, I can't remember what it is, uh, 230,000 forms. Um, these other browsers, the way Filler works on Android is because Chrome, if we're, not, we're not able to be an extension in Chrome, they're, they're not uh, that generous. Um, we have, we're integrated into all these second or third tier browsers. I don't know, if, I've never met anyone who uses Rocket it. Browser. A second, yeah. Future. I've never met anyone who uses downloader and private browser, but uh, that probably leads me into the next slide. Can you guess what that usage, erratic usage is? That's our different what websites in a particular industry, and that's probably being used on downloader and private browser. I have no idea people fill so many forms on, on porn sites, but they do. <laughs> So all of that's great, and I, you remember earlier we, I had that funnel of features, 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 features. Well, now we're, we're able to respond to the statistics 
uh, and introduce new features. So this is a quick one. We noticed uh, a fair bit of usage up until this point on login forms, and we never thought, we, we always thought filler, oh, it's going to be for long forms. Why? What, you just use it autofill because you want to save a lot of time, but people were using it on login forms, and login forms have two fields, username or, or email address and a password, and we didn't supply passwords because we didn't, we didn't want to get caught in that whole password management um, area, so we were just, people were just using their username, just their, their email address, so 15, 20 characters, but it was enough for them to save, you might as well save that time, you got filler on your phone, you might as well log in using that. But we also thought, well, we might as well also respond to this and give them the ability to store their passwords. And we did that uh, just for the end of last year, and we were able to supply that feature, and we saw an, another big jump in users, users on login forms because oh, now we've built, we've built the two fields. And that's, that's a chart for one, though. And a low-tier brother. It's much higher. So, this is his moment. <laughs> My moment. Um, so one morning, uh, Chris comes in, goes to the website, and goes, hey, where are my stats? I'm like, what do you mean, where are your stats? They're there. And he goes, no, they're not. And queue five minutes of this, yes, they are, no, they're not. And I go, fine, you want me to open a browser? I'll open a browser. I went to the browser, and there were no stats. Um, cue panic, but then I calmed myself. And I thought, OK. So this is, remember how I had that neat little graph with queues and EC2 instances? So what I had done was, at that point, I knew that we were going to use it long term, this idea of statistics-driven business. But I did not know how serious it would be, and I did not know, when I said long term, I meant, oh, sure, we'd probably use it for a few months. Wasn't sure how down the road we'd still use it. So this is what I did. That's one instance, which I very generously call the cluster. Um, can you still call it a cluster? If it's one. Um, they didn't know. Um, the same instance had the Elasticsearch indices, had Kibana, had Nginx. Uh, the fun bit was, I had used Elasticsearch in a capacity some time ago. And I thought, I will use it the exact same way. Now, when I say some time ago, I mean two years. And all of us are very familiar with the fact that technology does not change a lot. So I said, I will just use it that very way. I use something that Elasticsearch used to have, a plugin. Uh, I'm sure there's, there's plugins to do various things like visualize Elasticsearch. And so two years back, Elasticsearch had this backup plugin called Knapsack. Knapsack is like your mover. It comes into your house, picks up your house, and takes your house somewhere else. And I thought, that's what I want. So essentially, the backup there was, there's Elasticsearch. Just copy all those indices and put them in S3 every time. Don't care about deltas. Just, just do it for the everything. And I, uh, basically, the consumer that pulled the data from the queue and shoved it into Elasticsearch was a Ruby script which used a thing called Tire. It's a Ruby API, deprecated a lot. <laughs> um, the guy refuses to answer questions. That's how deprecated it is. Um, and I use that. So what happened was one node, two deprecated APIs, simply because I wanted to get it done quickly. Um, and what happened was the backups, I think, were every hour or every two hours I had set it up. One of the shards must have gotten corrupted. I don't know how. I don't know when. Sorry, I sort of have an idea of men. And because there's only one node, there is no shard to balance it on any other node. So I kept backing up the bad indices, which was fine, sort of. What happened was I decided to upgrade Elasticsearch. And this is, sorry, not Elasticsearch, Kibana, for a very, very foolish reason. The new version of Kibana had more colors. <laughs> 
In my defense, I had less sleep that day. And I thought, I'm bored with this default green, and I don't want to do this. This new one has orange. Who doesn't like orange? I'll give Chris orange. And I decided to upgrade Kibana. And for those familiar with cloud, uh, um, cloud formation, uh, and basically that one node was inside an auto scaling group. And what that does, it shuts it down and starts a new one up with sort of standard setup data. It did that while the backup was taking place. Because I, 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 I'm a genius. Um, and what happened was, when it tried to restore, that backup wasn't fully done. Because what had happened was, I would write the name of the last backup in a file. When the stack came back up again, it would first go to that file, grab the name of the backup, and try to restore from that backup. But what had happened was, the backup was the name of the last one. Now remember, when I said about corrupted shards. So what happened was, I tried to restore from a dodgy backup. Very close to my face, and I thought, that, 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 that's fine, that, that's fine. Only an hour long. I used to do it every hour. Two hours, it's two hours, they won't notice. Try to restore it from a two hour backup. Same face. It's fine, it's fine. That's last day. yesterday, yesterday will be fine. I did this on a Tuesday. Like Monday, Monday is always good. I'll, I'll, I'll do it, it'll be fine. No. Now at this point, I suddenly realized how dry my mouth is. Because it was that around that time when I, these guys got really excited about it. Like, oh my god, this is telling us so much. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> I went back a week. Now at this point, I, I, have two mo I have two monitors in my desk, like any self-respecting developer should have. And on my left, I am trying to restore backups. And on my right, I am opening up Seek seeing what new positions are available. <laughs> um, so I had to go back a month and a half. We lost a month's worth of data, real world user data, even though there was a backup. Why? Because I was foolish and did not look up documentation again, but more importantly, because I had to rush things. I just want the, the, the dodgiest words, I still remember in my head, I'll fix this later when I set it up. There is no later. There's just a new interview that you have to do with one of the company. Um, so that, that, that was what happened, really. And what did I do after that? After convincing them that, and one of the feelings I had was, when I couldn't restore, for some reason I thought, I have passed my probation. They at least have to keep me for six weeks. <laughs> no, they don't. I looked up, I spoke to a few people more experienced in Elasticsearch, and I did a few things better, or as they have known widely, the way they should be done. Uh, as you can see, I have more than one node. I can now legitimately call it a cluster. Uh, minimum three, please have minimum three, an odd number so you can have a master and a equal number of slaves. Uh, as you can see, I moved the visualization to Sivana away from the nodes. It doesn't need to be there. Um, what that essentially means is you can then have two different types of pieces of instances, one optimized for NDC and one for memory, if you wanted to. And I did not use tire this time, because apparently Elasticsearch recommends something else, something you know, what they call up-to-date. I used it, it's Elasticsearch Ruby. It's on the side. It's free. Use that. It works really well. And Surprise, uh, two years later, they have their own inbuilt backup functionality. Uh, they call it snapshot and restore. <coughs> and it works on deltas. So first time backup does everything. Next time backup is just what has changed. As you can imagine, it's quicker. If you accidentally try to delete a backup, it checks if that data that's in that backup you're trying to delete is being used. If not, it doesn't delete it. Um, Elasticsearch snapshot is smarter than I am, which is kind of depressing. And all of this backup is now being tested. I have a script on my laptop that every morning pulls down the backup, loads up Elasticsearch, so I manually check that data is there and it corresponds to production. And this is how 
it should have been done in the first place. Looking back at it from a point of view where I know my job is slightly safer, I should have done this the first way. It didn't take much longer. It doesn't take longer to do it properly. It doesn't. But there's always that sense of, I'll just get it done quickly and get it up and running and people will use it and I'll quickly fix it and make it better. No, don't. Take your time and do it properly. It may, take, it may seem like it takes longer the first time. It saves a lot of time later on. <laughs> or maybe that's just me. I don't know. Which makes it sound like an office of tyrants who would buy, buy a, a drop of a hat, but was never, never, that speed hump aside, um, well, what do we do now? We, every morning, every morning we walk in, grab a coffee, first thing uh, one or two of us, three of us maybe, look at uh, what happened overnight. I mean, most of our users, 70% are in the US, another 20% are uh, in the UK, so everything sort of tends to happen overnight, obviously, and we get in the morning and see what jumps out and what's going to be the, the, the next Supreme or the next contest girl or or what's what, what's suddenly being used, what's, how's it being used, what sort of... And, and you know, every so often there is a, a new nugget of gold that we, we get to get excited about and, and suddenly look into and, and then market to and, and understand where we're going to throw some money. Uh, and, and that's essentially the, the beauty of what's, what's happened since stats and um, our growth is intrinsically linked to Mujer's fine work in, in um, us being able to analyse what happens in, in usage. I mean, a, a lot of factors go into that sort of transactional growth. Obviously, you grow naturally, but there's, without doubt, um, we've been able to grow massively uh, in usership, but also our, the way we spend our money, um, we're not just spraying bullets when it comes to marketing, um, and we're, we're, we understand how that growth, uh, we, we're able to replicate that growth, we understand what, that it's, that um, there, is, there is formula to it, it's about identifying our users, it's about knowing uh, where, where, we can, where we can get more and, and not just um, get, taking, taking a lot of the guesswork out. So, yeah. yeah. One of the, I guess, from a startup point of view, this was a lot cheaper. I, every company has monetary considerations, but for a startup, it is even more so. So that was definitely one of the factors that, like, let's use Elasticsearch. We're already in AWS. Let's not spend a bit more money. But there, I'm sure there are other things you could do. I'm sure Mixpanel works. I'm sure there are other apps that you could use to your benefit. This works for us. It works very nicely for us. We're not here selling Elasticsearch or AWS or our app. What, I'm, what we're hoping that we can convince you of is it's very easy to fall into the trap of we do this, hence it. We have an idea because we do this, and therefore others must also do this. Test that theory with numbers, because it's very easy to do. That's it. Please clap. <laughs> Any questions? What's the spike in March? Uh, this one here, <laughs> that, that, that's, uh, so Supreme went on a, uh, what was it over there, winter hiatus, um, uh, they didn't have a drop for about two or three months and then um, in, uh, it was yeah, in March, it was, it was late, yeah, yeah. Yeah, late Feb, yeah, late Feb, um, their uh, spring summer range, much anticipated come out and we just saw an incre just incredible amount of usage. Uh, in uh, on transactions for that. And this has led to another thing. For example, now we know Supreme is getting us a lot of users. So we have separate things in place to monitor the website of Supreme. Because like with everything else, you update a website. So the thing that generates the form may change. Well, the funny thing about Supreme also is that um, they try and negate autofills. They, they try and negate that people have made bots to try and uh, game, the, game their whole system in, in that if they can put things in the cart through to check out all uh, Supreme are active in, in trying to stop that. Um, they're not necessarily against autofill, but they like to change the back of their forms just to stuff with autofill. And that's had the effect that our app, thanks to this, is becoming better and better and better at understanding forms without having to rely on regexes. 
simple regex is, or hey, that that form has that field. Just remember it forever. I mean, there was we we, we knew that prop was we knew that prop was coming, and we were we had no idea because there, there's no form on the site up until the morning of that. And so we had no idea whether it was going to work. We just knew that Reddit Supremes were all talking about. They're all getting filler, and we were going, oh, geez, I hope it works. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's, it, it's 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 helped us become better by showing us these other sites that you have to monitor. Okay. Oh, sorry. So you're, you're holding around um, uh, backups and stuff like that. What process are you putting in place? Oh, this is getting away from the key result. No, what, what process are you putting in place to keep your backup script backed up? Because if it's all on your laptop... Yeah. Oh, no, my backup, my backup script is not on my laptop. It's somewhere else. It's just that now I'm paranoid. Yeah. So I look at it myself a, a lot uh, because pretty colors but <laughs> there's a script and it loads it up and it checks it and what it does is um, Elasticsearch has a cat API so you can basically query and get a number back and I match that with production against number of documents number of particular documents uh, health of cluster health of shards and if that match is great otherwise it gives me a cloud watch alarm and I panic that, that's it. It just, it's paranoid, nothing else. That healthy, I. Healthy sure. Just an observation. Sure. Very, very lucky. Yeah. Generally lucky. It's, it's, it was, as I said, I, I took a shotgun I should not have. There is a little hole in our, in our historical data. There is. <laughs> but that also allows us to Thanks, mass massage those, that era. Of, yeah. We had lots of users in that. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, so. No, there, there, there is. We can't help it. It's, and it's good it's there. And Because right. all I need to do is look at that time and realize shortcuts don't work for me. <laughs>